Squad, welcome back. We are in uh, week two of our conversation about guardrails. Now, if you weren't here last week, what I want to do first is I want to get you caught up. I want to catch you up to where we were as we were discovering what it is that God has for your life and some things to help you make really great decisions today so that you have fewer regrets in your future. Now, when we when we approach this subject of guardrails, we said that there's a couple ways that you and I can live our lives. And Paul echoes these in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, six, verse 16 and 17. And this is what he says. He says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So he says, listen, there's two different ways to do it. You can live as somebody who is wise. And we said that somebody who is wise lives with the understanding that every day of their life is connected to their future. In other words, the decisions that I make today shape the person I become, the people that I surround myself with, and the opportunities that will arise in my future. That all comes from my capacity to live as somebody with wisdom, to be searching for the absolute best, not for what's going on right now, but what's the absolute best for my future. Now, the other way to live was unwise. And and living unwisely says, hey, I'm just going to live for today. I'm going to take advantage of everything that I can. YOLO, you only live once. I'm a teenager. Let's go. Let's do this thing. And I'll worry about the consequences another day. And Paul's challenging us. He says, listen, don't do this because in the next verse he says, he says, listen, your time is limited. I mean, you need to make the best use of it because the days are evil. In other words, you have to be intentional about this. You have to be intentional about making wise choices so that you end up in a place that you want to be and that you don't end up in a place looking back and going, man, what a life full of regrets have I lived. So today we're going to keep on that conversation and it's going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit more brief today because I want you to go back to your small groups and have some more time to think about uh, what what kind of guardrails personally you might set up in your life. Remember the guardrails are there to help you and I make wise decisions, to keep us from going over the edge into the danger zone of poor decision making. So if I put some guardrails up and I choose, hey, I'm not going to hang out with people that do this, or I'm going to make sure that I don't put myself in this kind of an environment, or I'm going to make sure that my relationship with my boyfriend or girlfriend uh, has this standard before it so we don't find ourselves in a place that fills us with regrets for our future. Those are the guardrails that you put in or the standard of behavior that you choose to live by so that you can honor God and have greater opportunities in your future. So let's go back to Paul. In Ephesians chapter 5, if we keep reading forward, this is what he says. says, So do not be drunk with wine because this leads to debauchery. Now, debauchery is a pretty big and loaded word, no doubt, and it's probably one that you could essentially live your whole life and never really pay any attention to or use a normal conversation. But what Paul is trying to help the people understand is is that there's the sin of debauchery, and that's a very real thing. And and, and debauchery, we can define it by like a loss of control, that, that that I've gone so far, I've indulged so much in something that I've lost all control. And so Paul says, listen, look, 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 one of the things, for an example, don't get drunk. Because when you get drunk, what happens? You lose control. You get cray and you start making really bad decisions. So Paul says, let me just help you understand this. Set the guardrail for your life as you consume alcohol. Don't get drunk. Be in control. Do not lose control. Now, now for you in this room as a teenager... Alcohol is one of those things that legally you're not even supposed to have a part of until you're 21. So there's automatically a sin associated with you engaging in it before you're 21. Why? Because you're breaking the law of the land and the law of the land is established by the authority set by God. And therefore, when you do that, you step outside of their authorities, you step outside of God's authority, right? And so so understanding that as a teenager, that's where you already are. But what are some of the guardrails that you need to set up in your life when it comes to your relationships, when it comes to how you're handling social media, when it comes to the way that you're talking to uh, or talking about other people. Maybe there's some guardrails you need to put in your life because your debauchery may be gossip. Your debauchery may be talking bad about other 
people. See, in your life and in my life, there's all kinds of places that we can put some guardrails up and go, okay, I am not going to engage in that conversation. I am not going to hang out with those people. I am not going to engage in this activity. Why? Because that is going to lead me to a place of great regret and much fewer opportunities. For me personally, one of the things that I've placed in my life as a guardrail is that I don't ever view and I never have sat down and viewed pornography. It's one of those things that I heard early on that pornography was destroying people's marriages. It was destroying their relationships with with their wife. And even as a teenager, I was like, I don't want anything to screw that up. I, I, I don't want... I don't want something that I engage in today to ruin my future family and my marriage for tomorrow. And so there's a lot of guardrails that I put up to make sure that I don't accidentally fall on this website or I don't accidentally come across certain materials that would engage my mind and begin to put me in a position where I I, I have regrets in my future. So you need to think personally, what are some things in my life that, yeah, if, if I want a successful marriage one day, how do I need to handle this? And if I, if I want to be a great father one day or a great mother one day, there's some things that I'm not going to engage in today. So for you personally, as you work through this some more in your small groups, I want you to read through Ephesians 5 verses uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And I want you to navigate that and begin thinking, okay, how can I put some guardrails in my life? What are some things I need to think more through so that I'm protecting my future and at the end of the day, I'm living a life that honors God?